just obviously real excited about uh, the season ahead. Uh, each year is a new journey and a new group of players and uh, makes it, you know, some people say, well, you know, does it get uh, to be monotonous or whatever? Uh, every year is new and uh, exciting. Uh, we obviously have some veterans that uh, we're going to lean on heavily. Uh, a couple of them here with us today. Um, obviously, uh, Maya Spencer and Dominique Wilson uh, both uh, had years like a year ago where they averaged double figures in scoring, and I think we're ranked in the top 15 in the ACC. So uh, from a perimeter standpoint, we're really confident in their abilities. Uh, Carly Schumacher here with us, a senior uh, that started uh, most of the year last year along with Jen Matherin uh, at the four position. So we've got a good core of veterans. Um, but we also have a good group of uh, freshmen. Obviously, uh, ESPN ranked the freshman class 16th in the country. Uh, right now, sometimes during practice, I think maybe more like 216th, but uh, <laughs> they're going to get there. And um, uh, at times, I'm sure for them, uh, it is a, a big transition, uh, not only on the court, but then with the academic uh, demands and being away from home. And I think right now at times they feel like they're trying to take a sip of water out of a fire hydrant and are getting blown away. But uh, uh, again, they're going to come around. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a real opportunity to ease into it. Uh, Villanova uh, is a very talented team, won 22 games last year, including uh, one against us. Uh, I think they're picked to finish third in the Big East Conference. Uh, Harry, uh, Harry Peretta does an excellent job. Uh, a lot of coaches have said to me, are you guys crazy for playing them? Uh, because they play a five out offense where they do a lot of backdoor cuts, they do a lot of back screens. Uh, they just really uh, exploit any weakness in your defense very well. So it's a tough way to start. You know, it might have been nice to ease into one or two and give the freshman a chance to uh, uh, not get thrown into the fire, but uh, that's where we are, so we're looking forward to that challenge. Uh, obviously, this Sunday we have an exhibition game. NCAA uh, only allows you to play Division II teams or Division III teams in your exhibition games, so uh, we're playing uh, Wingate uh, University, and uh, uh, we're, again, looking forward to getting out there, turning the lights on, popping some popcorn, and uh, Letting, uh, letting our kids play in a, in a game-like situation. So um, ACC, we, as we prepare for it, obviously that's what we're trying to do right now in, in these uh, you know, first uh, 12, 13 games. Uh, we're trying to clean things up and still survive and win games, but also prepare for a, a big challenge ahead. And um, we're, again, it's an honor to play in the, in the ACC. Uh, to compete against the best in the country, uh, night in and night out, as it is an honor to be here at NC State. And uh, uh, I try to remind the players of that at about once a week or so, just uh, how blessed they are to be uh, at this level. But I also told them, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, we don't want to just be in the ACC. I don't want them to someday. We had Chastity Melvin, uh, Wolfpack, women great player actually she was here uh, when I was before uh, we had her at practice last week and she spoke to the team and I told our kids yesterday you know that's what you want to be able to do is come back see your team and tell them not that we competed in the ACC but that we won in the ACC so that's what we're working for every day uh, to get this program where you guys uh, definitely deserve uh, a team that is very uh, successful in the league and uh, in the country for that matter. So that's what we're working towards. This year is going to be a transition, a lot of young players. Uh, but like I said, we're fortunate to have some veterans also that will uh, bring them along and, and help them through some of the growing pains. And uh, hopefully we'll get better every day, every week, every month. And by March, uh, we'll be ready for uh, postseason and uh, really do something special. So that's probably more of an opening statement than anybody wanted. So uh, I don't know if you guys just open it to question. If uh, members of the media have any questions, we can uh, move forward with this. So, I'm Mike Potter. I work for the News and Observer here. Um, you talked about the ACC. Maybe the, the top four teams that we ranked in preseason, 
people would think that they all have a chance to go to the Final Four, that's how tough it is. And in the next group that y'all are in, it looks like those teams are really well balanced. The, the, between like five and ten, there's two points different between right. the six teams. Well, uh, again, I appreciate you putting is, us in that next group because nobody else did. Uh, uh, you know, we weren't uh, as, you know, weren't really highly thought of. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, my first year here, we were picked 10th uh, in the ACC. Uh, we won 25 games, finished fourth, and at one time was, were ranked 10th in the country. So uh, they don't give out any trophies in uh, October. So uh, I don't worry too much about those things. Um, we got, we're gonna have to work hard. I mean, we're gonna have to uh, outwork people, out hustle people. But uh, you're right, there's, you know, I look at a Pittsburgh last year, they were picked 15th. That's dead last, folks. Uh, in the preseason, they ended up seventh and going to the postseason. So, uh, you know, you better be ready every night and, and bring your A game and uh, uh, we'll see where we fall. But you're, you know, you're, you're exactly right, it's a tough conference when uh, I say that because, um, you know, since being in this league, every one of these teams just about has a little number in front of them when you see them uh, because they're ranked. And so uh, there's no easy ones. And our players have to understand that. That uh, I look back on last year, some people will say, well, you were shorthanded, you had three season ending injuries, you know, winning 18 games, going to the third round of the NIT, that wasn't bad. And it wasn't bad. I was proud of our kids and the way they fought and uh, the way they grinded it out. But I also look back at about, you know, four or five games that were decided by a possession or two. You win a couple of those games and you're looking at a whole different season. So uh, it's that fine of a line, especially in this league. So um, we got to keep that in mind every day as we prepare. Talk about the transition uh, this season with Broughton High School and Reynolds being renovated. How, how well is that going and uh, how happy are you? Well, obviously I'd rather be in Reynolds, but I uh, think we all would be. But at the same time, uh, as I've tried to tell our players, you know, when we go to Broughton, uh, we're going to have the greatest fans in the country. We're going to have a great band. We're going to have great cheerleaders. Uh, we're going to have great students. And we're going to make it a home court advantage uh, wherever we're playing in Raleigh. So. Uh, we just got to go out and get it done. You know, when you look at the NBA, most of those teams don't practice where they play. Uh, they show up on game day. Our men, obviously, uh, similar situation. So uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's where we are. We're excited about rentals in the future. It's definitely made a big impact in recruiting. I think uh, when I look at some of the facilities on our campus, when you look at Tally, what a beautiful place now. When you look at the, the library now, uh, it is, unbelievable hunt library so uh, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with rentals and uh, I've said all along you know there's Wrigley Field there's Fenway Park and there's Reynolds Coliseum we're going to make it special and we're going to keep the history and the tradition but we're going to put some bling on it and uh, I think that makes a big difference with the recruits and it'll make a difference in our campus it'll be a great place a central point of campus uh, that we can all be proud of. When you're talking about the Villanova game being the top one, but you also have a chance to have about 10,000 people in there. If, if you get, get people that are coming to Michigan to show up early, what are you plan to do to try and get the crowd in? Well, I don't know. I've been thinking we ought to buy a lot of pizza uh, or something. <laughs> and maybe I need to do what Jeff Walls did at Louisville. Maybe I need to buy the first 2,000 fans there a beer, maybe. You know, I don't know. Uh, whatever we do to get people to come, it, I agree with you. It would be great to, to have that happen. I know playing at 5 o'clock is tough, and I know a lot of people, uh, you know, maybe getting off work and getting the family together and, and uh, are shooting more towards that 7 o'clock tip or 8 o'clock tip for the men. But uh, hopefully we can uh, convince enough to come out. And, and that's part of the great thing of playing a game or two over there, especially a doubleheader. You're hoping that maybe you can win over some new people. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, you know, I, I, I look back our first year, well, we played uh, uh, the pink play for K game. We obviously were winning a lot that year. We had 8,500 people at the play for K game. And then this past year, another good opponent, but we had 4,500. So we got to win. We got to do our part. And I tell our players that all the time. You know, they obviously, they love attention. They love uh, to be stroked and, and uh, to have the support. But 
we got to earn that. And uh, so I'm excited about that process and making that happen. Hey, Coach Daniel Lacey with the technical. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the injuries last year. I believe you had nine healthy players at the end of the season. This year you have 16 to start out. How does that help the team both in practice and when you start playing the game? Well, it's definitely made a great difference in practice. Um, you know, it makes practice more competitive, more intense. Uh, you hope that the players, by being rotated in practice, they learn how to play a little bit harder and not pace themselves as much. Uh, when you know you're going to be out there for the full two-hour practice, you might not go as hard, and then you develop some bad habits that might carry over to a game. So right now, it's all good. Now, when we start playing games, it probably is not going to be so good because there's going to be some players that are uh, not playing as much as they would like and not getting out there. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, I think competition's good. Uh, also, players probably don't like hearing this, but it's nice having a bench as a coach uh, because it can be a great motivator. And uh, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, if you're maybe not paying attention to detail quite as much as you should, then we got somebody else over here that would love to get out there and give it a shot. So uh, I like it from a coaching standpoint, and the players are just going to have to, like I said, compete that much harder and hopefully raise their game to a level where they're contributing and they're in that rotation. I think uh, playing in the WNIT last season was beneficial to get those extra games in? Yeah, it might have been. Um, I wasn't totally convinced that, that we wanted to do that last year. In fact, the players, we voted, and they said, yes, let's play. And then I had them vote again, and then I had them vote again. I gave them about three tries to say, no, nah, maybe we don't want to play. But they all wanted to play, and, and that's a testament to them. You know, a lot of kids, a lot of teams would have said, uh, let's, you know, let's get out of here. We'll be done with practice and, you know, move on. Uh, and we knew we were going to have to be on the road uh, because obviously Reynolds, the uh, project was getting started, so we knew we were going to have to travel. That's never easy, especially against teams that most, most of them had won 20 games. So uh, it, was, you know, it was a big challenge. But looking back on it, it probably was good for us. I was proud. You know, we came back in some games where we were trailing on the road, uh, found a way to win. Uh, even the last game, you know, they hit a shot in overtime, banked in a shot from straight on uh, to pull that one out. So uh, it, it probably was a good experience, and hopefully it'll pay dividends this year with some of the players that uh, were maybe young last year and hadn't, hadn't had that experience. Uh, Gatlin, you know, her jump that last year. Now you have a, another junior college center. I don't want to compare it to Gatlin, but do you see a big progression, hopefully? <laughs> wow, that's a, good, that's a good, good comparison right there. Uh, now, you know, again. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, do you see that second year as being where it really comes together? Well, you hope so, no doubt. And uh, I, I do think when, whether you're a freshman or whether you're a junior college transfer, your first year, you're still learning the system. You're still trying to figure things out. You're playing with a different group of people. You're playing, you know, the competition level is ratcheted up. Uh, so there's no doubt that second year is going to be a little bit easier. I think Carly's worked hard uh, during the summer to put herself in the best position. Uh, so, uh, you know, she's shooting the ball extremely well from the perimeter if we step her out there. Uh, so it's, you know, again, uh, hopefully it's going to help a lot of our players. Uh, to have that first year under their belt. And uh, again, we got to hope our freshmen can grow up in a hurry. We hope it doesn't take them a year because uh, we're going to need them to contribute right now. So with your starting backcourt, um, I would project they're going to be all ACC at the end of the year, Maya and Dominique. Tell a little bit about, about what they mean to the team. Man, we got to get you on these committees. First of all, you put us in the top, what, five or six in the conference, and uh, now you're getting our guards on ACC. You know, we nominated both Dom and Maya for all ACC. Uh, the voters didn't see it that way. So if I'm Dom or Maya, I'd be really motivated uh, to prove people wrong. But no, we, we do. We got a lot of confidence in, in both of those young ladies. Uh, you know, they're going to have to do it on both ends of the floor. I know they can score. They're going to have to work and be leaders defensively. Uh, we did not do a very good job of boxing out last year. Uh, we put together a, a set of clips of about every failed box out from last year. Uh, I really haven't shown that with the players a whole lot. 
But uh, we as a staff watched it, and, and I think rebounding is where it's at. I mean, Florida State uh, has really put their program on the map, and I think they out-rebounded their opponent every game last year. So that's how critical rebounding is. Uh, so we're going to depend on Maya and Dom to set some good examples for everybody and be leaders. And that's not easy because as a coach, I can tell them what they're doing wrong, and I'm not going to make a mistake on the court. When you're a player and you're trying to you know, bring the young players along, you can't afford to slack off because you know, here you are demanding of them certain things. You yourself have to live up to those same demands, and uh, that's not easy. But uh, hopefully uh, both of those kids can handle it, and I'm excited to, to know we'll have them here for two more years. Coach, you mentioned the ACC. Uh, you mentioned Florida State. They're in the top ten now, I believe, number nine. Uh, for the layman maybe who doesn't know as much about the ACC women's basketball, describe the co uh, competition within the conference. Well, I mean, I think you start with Notre Dame and uh, the success they've had the last few years. Obviously, Jewel Lloyd is gone, but uh, they still have a whole lot of weapons, uh, starting with Brianna Turner, a sophomore who was picked all ACC. She's a great post player. Uh, and then Florida State, like I said, they're just very athletic, and they just – crash. I mean, last year down there, I was very frustrated at the time, thinking the officiating was maybe not protecting our kids. Uh, but when I went back and looked at it, they were just clear, clearly jumping over our backs and getting rebounds. It wasn't a matter of going over the back with fouls. So uh, I think you can learn a lot from them. Obviously, uh, you know, our neighbors here, uh, uh, I know Duke's been ranked high in a lot of polls. Um, you know, you can feel sorry for uh, our other uh, local neighbor here and some of the uh, you know attrition that they've had but when you still look at their roster uh, they still got a whole lot of All-Americans over there so I'm not feeling too sorry for them. Louisville has the number one recruiting class in the country so uh, again there's a whole lot of people that uh, you got to climb over to to be the best in this league so uh, again, we're going to have to really work extremely hard, and uh, I'm excited, though, to get it started. Felt like last year we were, our hands were tied a little bit with our lack of depth, and losing Crystal Barrett early in the year was a, was a tough blow. So I'm excited about having depth, but again, you know, they're still freshmen, uh, a lot of those kids that we're counting on, and it's just different. I mean, it's, they're blown away right now. They don't understand that they're not playing near as hard as you're going to have to at this level. Uh, we're throwing a lot at them. I'm, I believe in preseason, you've got to put everything in to be prepared opening game for anything that opponent may throw at you. Well, that's, that's asking a lot. My assistant coaches are looking at me like I'm crazy. You know, they don't know what we're doing already, and now you're adding stuff. But, you know, I don't want to show up uh, for our opening game and all of a sudden they're playing a 1-3-1 one, one zone and we hadn't worked on a 1-3-1 one, one zone against it offensively or, or maybe they're running some special press and we hadn't prepared for that. So we've got to prepare for a lot of things. Are we going to be running them perfectly, you know, November 13th? No way. But I hope that we at least could, you know, if we do see something, we could at least during a timeout say, you know, hey, we worked on this in practice a little bit. This is what we got to do, and uh, hopefully that'll settle them a little bit. But uh, it is. It's, it comes fast. Uh, you know, I know they're sick of playing, practicing against each other every day. I, I can tell that uh, they're ready to, to get on and let's play some games. But uh, at the same time, there's certain things we have to do to prepare. So that's what we're trying to do right now. Of your freshmen, who's, who's coming along the quick for you right now? You could also talk about developing the local area, the really strong recruiting base. Yeah. Well, I think two of the very local young ladies uh, have really good opportunities to contribute. Uh, you start with Kayla Ely from Broughton High School. We're hoping she can show us any dead spots on the floor and things like that. Maybe, you know, which, which rim's better, or things like that. So we're depending on her heavily. But uh, she is a, is a point guard. Uh, Maya will be playing uh, some point guard this year, without a doubt. But we also lock her at the two some because that, that gives, makes it a little bit easier for her to get shots at times. So we're hoping that, uh, that Kayla Ely can come along quickly. She's super, speaking of quickly, she is super quick. Uh, I mean, she can turn the switch off and be in bed before it gets dark. Uh, so we're counting on her, but she's still not playing at that speed that we need her to play at. Uh, the summer before her senior year, I'm on the road uh, watching her play, and, 
and uh, still a little concerned about, okay, is she offensively going to score enough? And uh, I was with Jim Davis, former coach at Clemson for about 25, 30 years. Some of y'all may remember him. And I was talking to him a little bit about her, and he said, Coach, he said, she's going to get 10 or 12 points a game just off steals and layups. And that's what she was doing uh, in AAU and high school. She's not quite there yet here, but uh, hopefully we can get her to, to quit thinking uh, at times and just let it go and go make a play. Uh, Amber Richardson from Southeast Raleigh High School, great size, great body uh, for a wing player, probably 5'10", 5'11", strong, has a lot of potential, can shoot the three extremely well, uh, but again, needs to, uh, needs to play a little bit harder and, and get used to the college, the speed of the college game. Um, uh, I guess also out of the freshman, Nene Cole uh, from the D.C. area, Paul the Six, great program. She's a post player that uh, has a lot of potential, very good body, very strong, and um, will come along. And then, uh, you know, from there, Camille Anderson, uh, a young lady from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, shooting the three really well in practice, doing some good things, handling the ball pretty well. She would probably be our third point guard if we had to get to that depth. Uh, so she's coming along well. Uh, Dee Dee Rogers uh, from Myers Park in Charlotte. Um, again, very athletic, kind of a little bit of a tweener right now. We're still trying to decide where we like her better inside or maybe playing the four, uh, but, but a lot of potential out of her as well. And then Lena Ning uh, from the Riverdale Baptist program up in uh, D.C. area as well, long and athletic. Uh, probably a little bit raw right now, needs to, needs to you know, clean up her shot a little bit and things like that, but has great potential. So that's our freshman class uh, in a nutshell right there. So uh, again, I would say the first few that I mentioned though have the, have the first opportunity to contribute. And I, I haven't met D.D., but her father was one of the greatest players ever come out of this state. Um, what is the pedigree like for her being Rodney's daughter? What do you think that does? Well, I mean, I, again, uh, she is probably the highest ranked of the signees, uh, according to ESPN, for what that's worth. Uh, but I, again, I think she's, you know, maybe transitioning a little bit position-wise, and uh, uh, just I think right now she's one that's really overwhelmed with all the mental aspects of it. She's a sharp kid, but it's just right now on the court, trying to think and trying to play at the same time can be overwhelming, and uh, I think it is hard on her right now. But. Uh, yeah, her, her dad obviously was a great player, and uh, uh, we, we, we definitely believe in, uh, in looking at the genes and uh, the potential that a player may have. Can I ask, can you bring in like high school teams or you know, even our men's team to play the girls? We, uh, we, can, we can use male practice players. Uh, with 16 players this year and so many freshmen, we haven't really done that yet. I feel like our kids need the experience on the court, but uh, that's, I'll be honest with you, that's the reason I was late. Our staff was meeting just a few minutes ago and uh, we were discussing, you know, we may want to bring them in. Uh, we can work with them a little bit and try to have them maybe uh, simulate the Villanova offense. Uh, so that we can concentrate on the defensive side. We've been trying to run offense and defense, and, and I know it's, uh, again, they got a lot on their minds right now, so we may try to do that. So yes, we are allowed to do it some. Uh, it's not easy. They have to go through a strenuous checklist, just like our players. They have to be cleared by the clearinghouse, uh, you know, academically, and the hours that they're taking, and they have to have physical, so it's, a, it's quite an ordeal. But. Uh, uh, I have mixed feelings about it. Like I said, with six freshmen, I feel like those kids need to be out there as well. They need to be getting experience in practice every day. But at the same time, we need to simulate and prepare for our opponents. So we'll probably start mixing it up a little bit. Coach Andrew Schnicker with the Technician. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, you've got a big recruiting class coming in this year. What does it say about your program that you've got so many good young players that want to come play for you? Well, I think we just have a lot to sell at NC State. Um, you know, when you look at what we're doing with Reynolds Coliseum and the excitement behind it, I don't know if y'all know, but uh, our academic profile for our freshmen this year, the average freshman at NC State 
had a 4.4 GPA coming out of high school. That's because they can take those AP courses and it can be weighted. And the average SAT is a 1250. Uh, so I think we, we have a lot to sell um, with, uh, you know, with academics, with the campus, with the facilities, and with our program. Uh, I love my staff. I think they do a great job. I think they're good people. They care about our kids. And I think parents can see that and recruits can see that. So uh, I think, you know, again, we have a bright future ahead of us. So we got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, one of, one of the sayings we've been using this year, the only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. Uh, so we got a lot of work to do, but uh, we're excited about the success that's ahead.